All right, today we are going to install the Progressive EMS electrical protection system for the RV. It's a 50 amp kit that is designed to sense over voltage, under voltage, transient voltage, and a whole bunch of other electrical flaws that can occur in a campground pedestal hookup. Apparently this can destroy your RV, although I've had no personal experience, but there's been several people that have talked about and discussed uh, having thousands of dollars worth of damage done to their RVs because of a bad pedestal or bad power pedestal. So I'm going to go ahead and install one so that I can avoid that as we begin really uh, really moving around the country and hitting a bunch of different random campgrounds. Uh, so far we've been fairly stable which means that we've been in military campgrounds for the most part and most of the campgrounds have been really well maintained but as we move across the country there's a possibility that we might hit campgrounds that aren't so well maintained when we're hitting it overnight. So in order to protect our RV from that, we're going to go ahead and install an EMS system. I went ahead and went with the uh, hardwired system instead of the portable system because I have a tendency to forget things. Uh, I don't know how many water hookups and water <clears throat> regulators I've forgotten at the various uh, campgrounds that we've been to, but I have a tendency to forget things that are outside, so I'm going to go ahead and do the hardwired system so that it's permanently affixed. You can see we've got the progressive unit here. We've got the wireless remote and display, some extra screws, some tools, the instructions, and hopefully this will get us on our way. So, the first thing we need to do is find our main power cable. Ours is right here, very conveniently located in the kitchen behind that panel right there that you can barely see because of the poor lighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the screws from that, pull that out, and get access to the cord. In order to remove the screws, you need something like this, that nice square tipped screwdriver bit. Uh, most screwdriver bits on. Alright, today we're going to be installing the Progressive EMS uh, electrical protection system for our RV. Uh, if you've read the forums, the internet forums, done any research, you'll discover many stories of people pulling into campgrounds and hooking up to a faulty power pedestal and frying most of the sensitive electronics in their coach. We don't want to do that. Uh, so far we've been pretty, uh, pretty, pretty stable and close to home and we've stayed at campgrounds that we're pretty well aware of their maintenance and their uh, their willingness to accept liability if something does go bad, but as we move for across the country and head towards Alaska, the possibility is that we'll actually start using campgrounds that are maybe aren't so reputable or maybe aren't so well maintained. So in order to protect ourselves, we're going to install this electrical management system from Progressive. My research says that it's probably the best uh, EMS system out there. It's not the cheapest, but it is the best. It runs around $300 to $350, depending on where you get it from. You can get a portable unit, or you can get a hardwired unit. We're going to go ahead and install the hardwired unit, because I don't know about you, but I've left at least half a dozen uh, water spigots and water pressure regulators and whatnot at the campgrounds we stayed at. I don't want to leave one of these sitting at the campground when we pull out because I got distracted or forgot to grab it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the hardwired protection so it's always there and it's always available for us to use. Uh, taking it out of the box, you get a box about like this size. It's not very big. You're going to go ahead and pull the cover off. And inside you can see you basically have your hookups for your input and your hookups for the output and a couple uh, current meters, current rings in order to check the current and make sure you're not blowing something up. It seems pretty simple according to the instructions. You'll also get in the kit that I got a remote monitor and bypass switch so you can turn it off for instance if you're using generator or if you decide that for some reason you need to bypass it. And then you get a package of screws to go along with it. So the first thing you need to do is locate your power cord. Ours is pretty conveniently located. If you look down there, well maybe not. Anyways, I'll show you in a minute. It's pretty conveniently located right next to the refrigerator in the kitchen um, and right behind the, the air intake for the hot water heater. So unlike some RVs, we don't have to play contortionist here. We can have pretty direct access to it. When you take the panel off, in this RV, you're going to need many, many, many of these little square head screw bits. It uh, seems that RV manufacturers don't use regular screwdriver bits, so buy yourself a tool set that has a lot of those. 
Also, an electric screwdriver works really good as far as making sure that you can get access to it quickly and not have to sit there and screw a screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. We're going to look at the cable, and then most importantly, I'm not only going to flip the breaker on the power pedestal, but I'm also going to unplug it because I just don't trust people, and I don't trust the fact that the breaker turned the power off when I'm dealing with something that could possibly kill me. So you can see we've taken the cover off, and we have pretty easy access to our cord. And you've got a cord with a little bit of length that can pull out. You can see the back side of the shore power cord right there. If you wanted to take it apart for some reason and rewire it, you can do that. Or if you need to replace the plug. All in all, in this particular trailer, it is really, really easy access. And then if you continue around through the trash can area, you see our, our um, circuit breakers are right there in that container. So all really easy, really easily accessed for work on it. All right. So we've got the electrical disconnected, we've got AC or DC power still for our lights, but now we're going to go ahead and cut back some of the sheathing and see what we got below it, and then we're going to cut the wires and start doing the wiring. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm not going to cut right up here because that would limit my ability to move the cable, so I'm going to cut pretty much right in the middle here, and I'm just going to real gently slice into the sheathing. At this point, all of our AC power is turned off. If you had an inverter, I'd probably want to make sure that it doesn't wire in here, but I don't have an inverter connected at the moment, so no issues there. That's next on my list of things to do. Now, as you're cutting in here, if you end up not following through, you're probably going to be cutting the insulation of your wire, so be real cautious of that and make sure you don't leave any nicked wires loose. But I'm just cutting to see the wires and going to break the wires out so that I can actually cut them individually because I don't have a pair of cable cutters big enough to cut all these nor do I want to cut them all at the same time and then I'm just going to cut it back a little bit and you'll see that we've got a bunch of wires in there and I'm going to cut that insulation as well and again you want to be real careful not to cut the insulation of the actual wire because that's not good. That's how people get shocked and how electrical faults happen. So there you have it. We've got the ground wire and we've got the three electrical wires. Now what I'm going to do is see if I can cut these and this cable cutter may actually be big enough to cut them all. So, let's go ahead and give it a shot. There we go. This is an actual cable cutter. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's for a decent price. Works much better on cable than, uh, than regular wire cutters do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and strip it back a little bit more. Again, being very careful not to cut the insulation of the inside wire. And this is just to give us a little bit of working room. Alright, once you get that outer sheathing off, you're going to have to go ahead and trim these wires. And there's a couple ways to go about it. You can use a pair of wire strippers, which I would do if I had big enough wire strippers. These obviously will not cut it there. Or you can use a knife or a box knife or something like that. If you're using a knife, you have to be cautious that you don't score the wire underneath. So try to just run it around and gradually work your way in. and then see if you can pull it off. It will take a little bit of work if you're doing it with a knife. So my advice to you would be to actually buy yourself a pair of wire strippers that'll cut it. But I didn't plan that far ahead, so I don't have heavy enough gauge wire strippers. Even with wire strippers, you've got a pretty good potential for um, scoring that wire. And one of the things you made specifically for this task is a heated version of it. They'll heat up and melt the plastic, but I don't have one of those either. And you see I'm just using a pair of pliers to try 
trying to see if I can pull it off without having to actually score all the way down to it. You can see where you're where you're missing. And there we have the first one. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do for all the connectors on this one, or all the conductors and all the conductors on this one, so that we can go ahead and install it. So that's what I'll be doing here while the camera's off. Another option for stripping these that works pretty good is actually using the cable cutters and just crimping down lightly and spiraling it around. And again, grabbing it with a pair of pliers and seeing where you're at. You'll see that you got a double sheath here. You got the little light sheath. And then you got a thicker sheath. And ideally, you leave it just short of actually cutting all the way through. Again, you're really trying to minimize the scoring of the electrical wire. Alright, now that I've got all the strip down, we've got our progressive unit here ready to put our wires in. And if you look there, you can see that your input is going to go on the L terminals and your output is going to go on the T terminals. And two of your wires are going to actually go through these on the output. This is going to measure your current and sense if there's a, a too high of a current draw. One of the things you're going to need to do is you're going to need to push these wires back together because they're going to have to go through the actual hole into the unit. So push them back together and then you just slide them through the hole and out through the terminals. So I'll put it in here. And See, we're pushing it through there. Try to get on top of these wires because your actual terminal lugs are on top of the wires. And then you've got black goes to black, white goes to white, and red goes to red. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull these through here a little bit more. See if we can't get them organized. Actually, I'm going to pull it back out and organize it in the right direction. So we've got white, red, so if you got them in the right order, it'll help you putting it through just a little bit easier. Slide it in there. Another thing you can do to make it easier is to actually loosen up this cable lock on the outside, which is what the, is holding us up right now. And we're going to slide that up there. We've got our ground, our red, and our black. You can see this wire is pretty stiff. It's going to be a little bit challenging to bend it. I may end up having to break down these pliers in order to get it bent appropriately. easier to get lined up and then push them all in at the same time if you can which is what I'm trying to do here Alright, so I've got them forced into the terminal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one, the white one's the furthest one in, and I'm going to tighten it down. Nice and tight. To kind of hold them in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the red one and the black one in as far as I can. 
and this may require stripping down the wire a little, the sheathing a little bit more, but I'm going to try to avoid that. So I'm going to try to force these in there. And excuse my arm if it's in the way. Alright, so you can see now that we've got all the wires hooked up for the input, including the ground wire. Now they do provide a terminal lug for the ground wire, but it's for pretty heavy gauge wire, which is way bigger than what I had. You can see they sent this, but the end of it is huge. So what I did is I just wrapped a circle in it, which is typical of electrical insulation in your house, and wrapped it around the screw and tightened it down. That way it's not going to work its way loose. So this sensor needs to go on the red one. You see that it's got no green stripe on it. The green stripe one goes on the black wire. And you'll see that you can barely see this arrow here. This arrow goes towards the transformer side. So it's going to go that direction. And it's going to go right on the red wire. This is so it can sense current. And then the other one is going to go with that little arrow towards the transformer, or towards the T1 block, and that's going to go on the black wire. You can see that this doesn't really aid in trying to get these terminals connected, so I'm going to have to fight with this for a little bit to try to get it hooked up, and I'll be back when I'm done there. Alright, so now, after much fun with the terminals, which is always the hardest part if you read the reviews on this thing is getting those wires to bending line up with the terminals and actually fit in that little bit of room there and we got the ground wire securely fastened there and we got that ground wire securely fastened over there and we have our controller our remote display hooked up just to test it now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and plug in power turn on power make sure it works before I finish this insulation Cross our fingers, hopefully it works, light will be good. All right, as you can see, we have a flashing display that tells us the status of it. And the big important thing is that we see E0. E0 equals, it's working, it's normal operations. So it's showing you the different legs, it's showing you the voltage, and it's showing you that most importantly, E0 is working correctly. Now one thing to note on this, is that, hold on while I get you up here, when you turn it on, one of the nice things it does is it delays your AC start so there's not a big hard surge of power when you turn it on. So it gives a little bit of delay before the power turns on. So when you install this thing, if you think that maybe you screwed it up when you first flip the breaker because nothing happens, it's actually sensing the power and making sure it's stable and then it's going to turn it on for you. So as you can see there, we've gone ahead and installed it in there. Move the light around a little bit. Um, we fastened down the uh, the wire. I can't even remember what you call them. Anyways, we fastened down the wire holders on both sides of them. And I put a couple screws in there to hold it down and put the cover on and tighten it up. That way it's not going to go anywhere. Now the last thing we have to do is decide where we want to put that. Now, you probably can tell it in the camera, but it's kind of an obnoxious red flashing light. So at night, it's probably going to be irritating. So I'm going to kind of put it someplace unobtrusive. And because I don't feel like running that wire anywhere, I'm going to go ahead and mount it right here, close to where the actual EMS system is. All right, you can see that I just put it on the front of this grate here for the air intake for the water heater you can see that it's still functioning just fine it actually shows you your current draw while it's operating which is kind of neat to see if you flip it up you can see that in the back all I did was put a wire tie through the other end of the screws and another wire tie on the cable in order to keep it in place so I don't have a loose cable wandering around and then I just tied up the rest of it and gave myself enough length to go ahead and remove this panel if I need to now, if you wanted to put it somewhere else, there's plenty of cable. You could have ran cable, but if you look here, I didn't really feel like routing cable behind cabinets 
and up there onto the wall where it's already kind of crowded that's a pantry and that's my other control panel and I didn't really see a whole lot of convenient room for it and the other thing is that red light is really obnoxious I don't want to see that flashing at night so I want it as unobtrusive as possible to tell you the truth I might even consider putting this inside the cabinet to keep it out of the way I don't know about you but I kind of like it dark when I'm sleeping at night or when I'm just chilling around the RV at night time down here would be pretty unobtrusive. So there's the install. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it took about an hour, hour and a half to do. The biggest part of it was actually um, trying to bend those wires to get them into the terminals, especially the two wires that had to have the current sensors on them. That took a little bit of effort, but other than that, it wasn't really that bad. It's not highly technical. In fact, anybody with just a little bit of knowledge and a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and wire cutters could probably do this and follow the instructions without too much trouble. If you don't like dealing with electricity and you're scared of electricity, probably pass it up and have somebody else do it for you. But if you're at least a little bit handy and you've done a little bit of home wiring or something like that, it should be just fine for you. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments and let us know. Um, and we'll try to answer anything that you have. Thanks for watching.